Hello everyone, today we are going to be showing you the basics of UModeler. Specifically, we're going to be covering primitive shapes and the basic UI of UModeler. What you're going to do to get started is you're going to go up to your Tools tab after importing UModeler, going to UModeler, and then inside of that, you will go to New UModeler. And already, that will open up two windows here. That opens up the little UModeler toolbar here. In here, we have the object tool, which is the big red box, which allows you to select and move around whole objects. You have the face tool, which allows you to select individual object faces. You have the edge tool, which allows you to select edges. And you have the vertex tool, which allows you to select individual vertices. You also have a settings menu. So in here, you can adjust snap settings. So if you want your object to snap to a grid, that's all done here. You can enable that. And there are predefined values right here. But if you don't like any of those values, you can set your own value in this little box here. You can also set the rotation snap size, so if you're rotating a face, edge, or object itself, it will snap to this amount of degrees, like 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, or 50 degrees. I'm going to just leave that on. And then the other menu that it opens up is in the inspector here. You can see that we have a lot of options for what we can do. You can also change this to an icon-based menu by right-clicking on an empty space, hitting icon-based menu, and then it's far smaller and more compressed. But personally, I like the text space menu, so I'm going to right-click on an empty space, hit text space menu, and go back to how it was. We have a lot of tabs here, and the tab we're going to be looking at is the Primitive Shapes tab. In here, you have box, room, stair, cylinder, cone, spiral stair, sphere, and capsule. So what we're going to do is we are going to be using the box. As you can see, when we select the box, it opens a little properties menu, which gives us the width, depth, and height of the box. And it also gives us two other properties, border check and glue. And we'll show you what those do in a second here. So what you can do is you can individually adjust the values to get the perfect sized box. So we can do three, three, three here and then you can click one click build and then right there you'll have a box with your exact dimension but what you could also do is you could go and draw the box with your cursor as you can see there is a black square which is following my cursor that is where the box will be drawn so you can just left click and drag to create your box and then when you're done and you've decided on a size that you like this one will work fine for us we will let go of the left mouse button and then we can move it up and down and select the height we want this looks good and then we can just hit space to confirm now let's cover some other primitive shapes so the first shape we covered was box, so the next one we're going to cover is room. Now, we're not going to cover all of these shapes because some of them are pretty self-explanatory, but we are going to cover the top three. So, we already covered box, so now we're going to cover room. So, selecting the room tool gives us some properties here. It gives us the same width, depth, and height that the box tool did, but it also gives us this thickness one, and this is because the room tool creates a hollow box with a with an inner box and an outer box so what this thickness tool does is it allows us to determine how far apart these two boxes are the default is 0 0.5 but if i want them to be a little bit further apart which in this case i do i'll set it to 0 0.1 and then we will draw our little room here that looks good to me and as you can see it has an inside whereas this box does not have an inside. That's pretty much all that there is to explain with the room tool. So let's cover the stair tool. So this tool has the width, depth, and height inputs boxes like the other ones, but it also has a rise box. So this determines how far apart the individual steps are from each other. We can go and just make our stair here. And so that's our little stair after we, because we didn't hit confirm. So we can actually adjust these while the stair is still being created since we didn't hit space to confirm. So let's just set this to 0 0.25. 
And you can also set it to wide step, which will rotate the staircase 90 degrees. You could select reverse if your steps are the wrong way around. It also has border check and glue. Now, now that we're done with that, we can hit the confirm button and there's our stair. Now we're going to demonstrate with this box that we created the border check and glue sections. So we're going to create two more boxes, one with glue on and one with glue off. And then we're going to go to the polygon tool, which allows us to select individual faces here. We are going to click on the faces that we want to remove, and I'm going to control click to select both of them. And then we can go down in the U Modeler menu here, and we can go to Remove and hit Eraser to delete those faces. So as you can see, the box with glue actually cut a hole on the polygon where the face was connected. It kind of makes them into one object, whereas without glue, it keeps that face. It kind of treats them as two objects, even though they're still the same object because we didn't create a new U modeler object. So all of this is still in the same object, but this is more treated that way as it deleted that face right there. But this one did not. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show the boundary check tool. What we're going to do is we're just going to do the same thing, create a new box, one with boundary check enabled. So this is what the result with boundary check enabled would be. It actually is aware of the surroundings. So as you can see, it, it actually won't go past that one block. It will stop at the first wall it sees. Now this can cause some lag. So if you don't need it to check for the objects around it, you can have border check off and then it will go and it will just go right through, doesn't pay any attention that the wall is there, and it just doesn't care at all. So that's pretty much the basics of primitive shapes in U-Modeler. I hope this video was informative for you, and we will be covering more U-Modeler features in a future video.